Jesus, lift up your voice and bless the name of the Lord. All are not sorry, oh God. Oh, what is Jericho? Bless him now, bless him. Give him the glory, 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 give him the glory. We give you praise, we give you praise. 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 Abrado man santa ya ba, ababela ababela, balamano 
Kokorote, Ramena Sika Bana, Rabena Mena Kapote, Ramena Sisa Vale Kabela Taya, Ababamana Korabenato, Baramena Sika Babo, Abramantoli Ababara Tabia Taya, Repata Kedele Keromonos, Roseli Ababo Kotele Lele Babaya, Baramena Seta Gabarona. Hola no soy yo ku Hola no soy yo Sabaramanta sobrana moseketa Rabasi gana barada bahasonte Reko pagara bele kamena si atabrada ba Ramando siko rato moseka baro Mama maya tika bilatina ya ya Oh, what did Jericho? Every one of Jericho comes crashing down. It comes crashing down now. Oh, la no sobi o kuo. Oh, what did what did oh? Oh, la no sobi o kuo. Manda makada bara na seta. Oh, la no sobi o kuo. Oh, oh, the Jericho, Saka Balo Parana Katela, Rena Maketale Asesa. Every wall of Jericho comes crashing. Pataya Seta, Parana Makosol, Rana Maleka Biata Telena Nana, Parana Makandugu Ragada Bigadi Asa, Ratele Telena Maruka Patele Anana. Rapanosa, Rakata Bene Sante, Repata Vigati, Rabadigi Hata, Rabahadia Cote, Repavale Kaman, Roboloko Melasa, Paramina Capele Tamen, Paranama Casanta, Rababale Casaya, Rababaca Santa, Paracamena Cados, 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 Catayana, Hatica Paradiga Bosaya, Abrosele. Aya kambi ya teli ana hatumina no kurama ba beramana brasa tana na mantalia abrasa tana every wall of Jericho comes crashing down asata ye hola no hola no I see a lady, you have a lump. Um, I think it's a lump in the womb that is obstructing you from carrying your child. Whether online or on site, you are aware. Um, whether online or on site, you are aware you have a lump in your stomach. In your womb, just place your hand on your on your tummy. In the name of Jesus, I come against your lump. Dry up now, in Jesus' name. That lump, dry up now. In the name of Jesus, you dry up, never to come back. Mysteriously, you're gone mysteriously you're gone never to be seen or felt or heard of again in the name of Jesus thank you father um, for someone God is saying to you take the step I know you're still scared but take the step it says the fear will disappear <clears throat> as you take your step so whoever that word is for, you don't wait for the fear to go before you take a step. It says take a step and on the journey, the fear will leave. The fear is not real. It's the devil's um, trap to keep you 
stagnant to keep you because what, what you're doing now is that you're waiting for the fear to go first before you now do what you want to do. But unknown to you, the fear would never leave you, unfortunately. Because the devil is very intentional with what he's doing. So your instruction is don't wait for the fear to go. Take the step. And the fear would leave. Glory to God. Praise God. Can we slap our hands together for the Lord? Glory to God. Thank you, choir. Amen. Can we have our seats? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Ah, glory to God. Glory to God. Um, if, you're, if you're sick in your body, just wait when we're done. We'll um, just cast out the sickness um, and uh, you can go home free. One of the things that we do in church is we give free gifts. Amen. Praise God. Amen. What did we say? We give what? Free gifts. Free gifts. Um, the doctors are there to collect your money because that's how they make their money. <clears throat> they are not your enemies. They are on the lost side, just that they do it at a cost. Uh, because, you know why I said doctors are on the lost side? They are not killing, right? They are saving lives, right? Yeah, so they are on the lost side. <clears throat> but because it's a profession for them, they have to earn a living, so they can't give it to you for free. Um, and just in case you get it for free, understand that someone paid for it. But when we come like this, the Bible said how God anointed Jesus with the um, Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil because God was with him. Acts 10 verse 38. All right. So Jesus went about doing good free of charge. Free of charge. He didn't collect money. If you, if you sowed into his life, you know, people give to Jesus. How many of you were aware? Eh? Hope you know that he was not commanding money inside the purse. You only had one account of him commanding. Is he command? You just told the guy, say, go to the water drawer. You see fish that has money in it. <clears throat> Aside that account, we don't have any other story of Jesus mysteriously multiplying money. Why? Because he ministered spiritual gifts to people. And the Bible said there were some women. That's the only one that was recorded. I don't know why men were not there. <laughs> <laughs> but there were some women who used to support the ministry of Jesus from their posts. Good to see you, bro. Yeah, praise God. All right, they used to support. So that was, that was how he was doing what he was doing. He didn't have a job. Um, uh, preaching to people was the only job he had. So the people were supporting him. All right? Praise God. So you don't assume that. So you don't assume that, you know... Uh, Maybe there is, there is, when you watch KOK movie, say once Jesus just wakes up in the morning, you just go to his cupboard, say, Eli, Eli, Laba, Shashtani, what's the right pronunciation? And money will just come. That's not how it worked. Praise God. People gave to his ministry, all right? So as he was healing people, he didn't charge them, but some person saw it fit as they had proposed in their heart without him cajoling them to give. Praise God. All right, so we want to look at something quite interesting this evening. Living above temptations. Living above temptations. Um, I think it was when we are praying this morning, leaders, uh, Bro Gideon said something very, very, um, very, very important. Um, it, it's the devil's trap for you to get to a point where you prioritize the gifts of the spirit above the word of God. It's, it's the devil's trap, all right? Um, and I've, I've seen people, I've heard of people also who in living that kind of life fell into error, right? I mean, I've, I, I, know of, I know of someone who fasted dry for, uh, I think, seven days and ran mad. The guy was just talking out of point after fasting seven days dry. Um, I've heard of people who um, a lady fasted like that and contracted an evil spirit afterwards because what she wanted, <laughs> don't be afraid, 
We fast here. Amen. Oh, we love to fast. We love to pray. Uh, but where I'm headed is everything has to be done in line with the word of God. Amen. Any expectation that you're expecting from a spiritual realm that can't find root in the word of God is the devil giving you something. Not, not minding, you know the devil can, can, <laughs> can do supernatural things, you know. Everything supernatural is not God. Do you understand what I said? In, in the supernatural realm, it's not just, just God that exists in there. The devil also exists. That's why if you go back to the book of Exodus, you realize that Moses was in Pharaoh's palace. And by the name of Jehovah, he took the staff and threw it on the ground. And the staff turned to snake. Do you read also that the magicians, the Bible didn't call them servants, called them magicians of Pharaoh, did the same thing. So if you judge what is God by what is supernatural, you most likely will run into error. God wants you to be built on his word. And the natural offshoot of being built in the, on the word of God is that you begin to see supernatural things happen to you. So don't, don't excuse it when you... Place your emphasis on God's word. Eventually, you would see that supernatural things would happen. But don't put the supernatural first before the word. Am I communicating? Because sometimes that's, that's the mistake many of us make. All right? We place the supernatural first. Say, if he heals me. Or if so, so, and so. How many of you say, if when God wants to speak with you, speak to you. You say, if this window closed two times, pow, pow, I'll know that that's God. God says, that, that, brother, that guy that offended, you, for, that offended you, forgive him. He said, God, if, if that my door that is closed, we open two times, I will know that that's what you want me to do. The first question you should ask yourself is, is forgiveness written in the word? That's the first question. All right? For, for things that are explicitly written in God's word, you don't necessarily need to hear another voice instructing you. It's like if I see, uh, if I see Pastor Pius's phone on the ground, and take for instance, if the person is, if I'm klepto, many of you know what klepto means. That's a safe word. That's a very friendly word for criminal. <laughs> yeah. So if I'm klepto and I see Pastor Pius's phone on the ground, and and I start praying to God, Lord, should I steal this phone or not? If you hear me saying that kind of thing, you would, what would be your response? It doesn't make sense. Why? Because there's already a command in God's word that handles that situation. So in, on areas where there is an explicit word, how many of you have been in situations where the spirit of God was instructing you to do something and years later you found out it was in the word of God? Hmm? It, it's happened. Where God is telling you, do this, do this. And you were just obeying, obeying. Then years later, whilst you were growing in, in the word, you all of a sudden realized that that thing God was telling you to do, that you thought was a special instruction, was actually always in the word of God. So what that means is that if I had found out what, the, the word of God's, what God's perspective from his word was, I wouldn't be sometimes... Uh, <laughs> Amen. There are certain things I, I should not say. Amen. All right, so, but all I'm saying in essence is the written word of God is not of less importance as compared to when you hear. You know, some of us feel like if I hear the voice of God, it has more weight than when I read my Bible and I see what is there. You must understand that the same inspiration that gave birth to the written word is the same inspiration that, give, that gave birth to the speaking in your ears. And the most important thing is that communication is established. How I talk to you, not in a rude way. If I call you over the phone, or I send you a mail, or I send you a text message, the most important thing is that I communicated, right? Yes. So it, it shouldn't have more weight. All right, so we're looking at living above temptations. No, 
So first thing we're looking at is, what is temptation? Or what is a temptation? If you say something is a temptation, what does it mean? What is a temptation? Said here that a temptation is a desire to do something, especially something wrong or unwise. A temptation is the des a desire or the desire to do something, especially something wrong or something unwise. So what that means is that I cannot say I am tempted to pray. You know why? Prayer is not an unwise thing, neither is it something wrong. You can't say I am tempted to bless Bro Ibube with a millionaire. Except with somebody's money. You know, you know some of you, uh, some, some persons who... People used to gather money. People gather their hard-earned money and give to you, say, we are doing a job, hold for me. Then you are not in church. You don't have money anywhere. They now raise seed. Then you say the Spirit of God is moving you to sow people's hard-earned money to the church. They will pick you up. And God will be with you in the cell. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. Because the, the first principle to giving is that you must own what you want to give. You know, I've seen people who are very generous with what is other people's own. Yeah. Yeah. As long as they're not the ones paying for it, they are very generous with it. But when it comes to, once he, <laughs> you say, hey, he's a very generous person, ask him, that thing is giving. Also, you say, ah, that's my boyfriend, very generous guy. Well, check, the rice that he's giving you, the... Palm oil, the Maggie is giving you. It's probably his father's own. His money is not there. <laughs> See, so yo, he loves me so much. He loves me so much. Wow. Check. We're usually very generous with what belongs to other persons. A very simple example now is if we say it is time for offering, and I say, take your neighbor's purse. And give like you have always wanted to give. <laughs> Just imagine, right? I take, I say, it's time for offering. I say, okay, everybody exchange your wallets. Exchange. Now I say, now, give like you have always wanted to give. Some of you, you will even give the money on the ATM. But just in case, what is in the wallet is not enough to Quantify what you want to try, what you want to give out. You give what is in the, you give the ATM also and request for the pin. Because usually we are more generous with what belongs to what other persons. So a temptation is something. It is a desire. A desire. Please take note of the word desire. Temptation is not action. It is desire. What comes after the temptation is on you. Let's take it a step at a time. Number two is, where does temptation come from? If I know that temptation is a desire to do something wrong, where does it come from? I remember years ago, let's see James chapter 1 verse 3 from the New Life Version. I remember years ago, um, and I, I'm sure many of us had that perspective, where Anytime you start praying, God, uh, I, I want to be patient. I want to be patient. I want to be patient. All of a sudden, you realize that very impatient people will come around you and begin to test your patience. Let me check. If, does, has it happened to you before? You say, you say, God, now I don't want to talk again. Now, is that day you decided, I don't want to talk again, that parrot will not visit you. And you're almost tempted to, you know, speak back. Or I know you will not raise your hand for this one. But if you maybe had a girlfriend one time, I know everybody here is born again. Don't do all of those. Amen? Amen. Yeah, all right. So you had a boyfriend and every single time the person visits you, you know, things used to happen. You know, we are discussing temptation. 
So we're going to be very, very, right? Great. So you say, today, I, I'm not going to do this any, any longer. No, I'm not going to do this any longer. If I, you called your boyfriend and tell him, told him, guy, I don't want to see you in my house. And as you are speak, as you are, you are dropping the call, you are speaking in tongues. Drop the call. Usually, maybe the guy will not come. Usually, maybe you'll not get a call from the person you had always wanted, but you settled for your boyfriend. So oftentimes, when you have an experience like that, it's very possible for you to say, God is the one testing my decision, right? Yes, it used to be my own conclusion then. When I have situations where maybe I prayed, I say, Lord, I'm not going to be angry again, and all of a sudden something happens, and... Anger begins to well up within me. I will say, God, in fact, the popular phrase is that whenever you pray for patience, God will not package somebody around you, right? Yeah? Uh, some, some of you are making me feel like I was the only one who was on that page. You know what I say? You know, that whenever, whenever uh, uh, you pray, you say, God, I want to be patient going forward. Say, God will not bring somebody around you who is going to test your patience. Usually, that's our conclusion, right? Now, let's see James 1. James 1 verse 13. Where does temptation come from? James 1 verse 13. It says, when you are tempted to do wrong, do not say God is tempting me. Why? Because God cannot be tempted and he will never tempt anyone. If you, let, let's see this from the KJV. There's, there's something I want to pick up. Pick up. Let's see this from the KJV. Or if someone can help us read, there's a word I'm looking for. James 1 verse 13. Great. It says, let no man say when he's tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither can he, neither, neither, what? neither tempted he any man. Now, what this means is that God cannot give you what he doesn't have. God does not have the ability to be tempted with evil. You know, the best of us human beings, if believers, are self-controlled. That's the best you get. There's no body on earth who is a believer who has never been tempted before. Or who will never be tempted again. But the Bible is telling you that God does not have the ability to be tempted. So it's like magnet, right? No matter how much um, proximity there is between a magnet and a tread, there won't be attraction. Because they are not made of the same fabric. It's the same thing with God. God cannot be attracted. To, he, doesn't have, he doesn't know what it means to be tempted. So then it tells you that because God cannot be tempted, he cannot tempt you with evil. Tell your neighbor, God does not tempt with evil. Let's see Mark chapter 4, verse 15 to 17. Mark 4, 15 to 17. If temptation does not come from God, because the first thing we needed to do was to, to, to identify where the temptation does not come from. You see, I've learned that some, especially in my journey with God, God always tells me what it is not before he tells me what is. Do you understand? Right? He always tells me what is not. So sometimes maybe you're praying let me use a, a real life situation. You're praying for a spouse and you're seeking, you're saying, I want, I want to be led by God. I want to be led by God. Five persons have asked you out and God is telling you no. But as he's telling you no, he has not told you who is the one. So usually, and you must understand that when he says no to your request and when he says yes, they are both answers. Amen. Amen. So you don't say, I've been praying. God has not answered. Well, there were persons who came and he said, no, that's an answer. Because if left alone, you most likely run home with the wrong choice. And it's not just about spouse. It's also about job. 
He said, the Bible says, uh, trust with the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will do what? Direct your path. What that means is that it's possible for you to live your life without God. I know, I know, I know people who, when they want to apply for jobs, how they settle for which one is which one pays the most. Your, your story is like, what was his name? Lot. Amen? Yeah, your story is like Lot. The Bible says Lot looked at <laughs> Sodom and Gomorrah. Saw how green he was. And he decided, this is the, the, the land that the Lord has blessed. And he, if he had known, if he had got some intel before that time, that, that land was going to be roasted with fire. He won't have, we won't have gone there. So the way to choose is not by earthly permutations. You, you will run into a lot of mistakes. Say, so, oh, that guy, six packs, speaks in tongues. You know? <laughs> I, heard, I heard someone say that some of us, the way we choose our spouse, we choose our spouses like we are auditioning for ministry. So he speaks in tongues. He casts out devils. He goes to church seven days a week. That is my husband. That is my wife. Is he a pastor? You have? <laughs> is he ministry marriage you probably want to do? Even when people want to employ people for ministry, there are other factors they check. All right? Yeah. If you say, I, I hear God. You know, one, one of the most arrogant set of persons to talk to are people who hear God. Quote and unquote. <laughs> the guy is working in an organization and they say, what the organization wants to sell now is slippers. He said, no, God has told me. That is rubber sander. <laughs> and no matter what you say to the person, you know, the, the, you can't fight God now. It's like if you, if you come and meet me for counsel and you tell me, God said, Baba, I have logged out. <laughs> hey, I, I don't log off. The only thing I'll be telling you is that you say, you say God said, you say, yeah, okay. So just follow what God told you. Told you. Now, I, <laughs> because if God has said, nobody has an opinion any longer. Nobody should. And I don't want to place myself, I've, I told someone, I said, nobody is that important in my life for me to instruct you outside what God has told you to do. Then God will not be asking me, why did you do it? Nobody. All right, so I, I requested for a scripture. Mark chapter 4, verse 15 to 17. Mark 4, 15 to 17. We're trying to identify where does temptation come from. It says, and these are they by the wayside where the word of God is sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their heart. Verse 16. Verse 16. It says, and these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness. 17 now. It says, and have no root in themselves. And so endure but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth for what the word seek, immediately they are offended. So the affliction that you thought was God was actually not God. And the reason why the affliction came was to take that word away from your heart. So we've, we've seen, number one, what is temptation? Number two, where does temptation come from? Number three now, we want to see why am I being tempted? Why? Number three, why am I being tempted? First Peter chapter 5, verse 7 to 8. First Peter 5, verse 7 to 8. It says, casting all your care upon him, for he cared for you, verse 8. Verse 8. It says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Now, the first reason why you are tempted is because there's a devil. See, if all the variable that was on earth was God, it means there will be no evil. Remember, in our definition of what temptation is, temptation is what? A desire to do something what? Something what? Wrong. 
something unwise. I remember that year, then when I used to steal meat from the pot. Now I can't steal meat from the pot again. <laughs> you know why? If I go inside the kitchen and take meat, it's my pot. I can't steal again. But I remember then when I used to steal. And I stole a lot, actually. Ah, Jesus. I stole. In fact, I stole to a point where I became creative. And my stealing was pot. Right? So I remember there was a day I got back from school. And there was a large pot of stew. I don't know why they did that thing, though. Large pot of stew. No rice. No boiled rice. No nothing. So what I did was I saw Gary, raw Gary, by the ground. I, I was very hungry. And I needed to eat and pretend like I would not eaten. <laughs> so what I did was I got a plate, poured the raw gari inside. Now, if the plate, if the plate was potter, the stew I put was more than the gari. So I turned it and ate it. If you've ever tried it, try it at home. This one is not, this is not, this is not, this is not, please don't try this at home. No, try this at home. No, but no, don't, not the stealing part. All right, so, so I, I stole. Now, usually you'll realize that before I steal, which is what we're headed there, before I steal, there's usually a suggestion. It is a suggestion that creates the desire. Do you understand? There's, there's nobody on earth who has done anything except for people who are de, uh, demon possessed. All right, I know. I've heard of stories of people who are demon possessed. Like, because of that demon, they, they steal anywhere they go. The day the spirit was cast out of them, see, there's more to life than what you see with your physical eyes. Like, somebody is a thief, a, a thief. Everywhere he goes, he steals. The day they cast out that spirit of theft from him, he stops stealing. So, I'm describing the normal theft, not the one that is spiritual. And there are some habits that are spiritual that we're going to deal with today. All right? And some persons don't even know that they have those issues. You just, you just feel like it's a passion, it's a desire, but sometimes it's way beyond that. There are, there are ladies who are promiscuous. And in fairness, now I'm not saying, don't, don't start, if you're a believer, you are not supposed to be in that kind of situation. All right, but I, I, there are ladies who, it is after they've, like any guy, call them Keziah. Usually, every Keziah is not, some are, you don't understand it, but Keziah means, uh, what does it mean? Animal shown in Yoruba. Like, you have it, you can't hold it. Somebody just asks you, give. Now, there are people like that, all right, who, in fairness, like, <laughs> usually in schools, I had, I had, I knew some of them when I was in school. You know, there was one that came to me then. She tried, 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 tried. She saw that thing didn't work. She now kicked me. Like, literally. She kicked me. <clears throat> Get out. Then, as she left me, that same evening, <laughs> I saw her with someone else. And what, the position I saw them in is too compromising for me to explain in church. So when I passed and I saw her, I said, ah, so this is what you, and eventually, the day I got to, because that guy actually left her, <laughs> eventually, you know, the, the, the truth is, people who are cheap, see, once you, once you make, and I think the disheartening part for me oftentimes was that after they are done doing what they are doing, you now hear guys discussing them like graphic. So that thing that you felt, oh, I just did it, oh, it's just between me and, it's just for you, girl. You know, <laughs> you feel like it's a sacred moment. <laughs> so usually by the time the lady is passing, you say, ah, it's been another girl they talk about with this. I say, me too, I don't do that. <laughs> like graphic discussion. Where was I before I got in here? First Peter chapter 5, verse 7 to 8. <clears throat> First Peter 5, verse 7 to 8. 
It says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, seeketh seek it whom he may devour. Number two, I said, the reason why you have temptations, number two, is because of your lust. Your lust. James 1, 13 to 15, your lust. Your what? James 1. It says, let no man say, we read this before, let no man say when he's tempted, I'm tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. Verse 14 now. Now see now. It says, but every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Verse 15. It says, then when lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. But verse 14 says, every man, verse 14, verse 14, it says, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. So what tempts you is your lust. And if you look well enough, you realize that, see, I always say this, as long as you have the, you have the, the proclivity, the ability to be tempted, even though you've not fallen, be careful. Do you get? When you can brag is when, say, I've never done X, Y, Z, but have you been tempted to do it? And between you and God, does God, do you have moments where you almost did it, but God restrained you? If you have that kind of story, you have nothing to boast about. Because listen, at the end of the day, everybody have their own brand of lust. Just as some persons' owns are more pronounced than others. But everybody is moving about with their pocket of lust. God is helping some persons overcome it. Some persons are already on the journey. But I say again, if you have the proclivity to be tempted, you've got no reason to boast. You know, <laughs> I've, heard, I've heard some, it's right when I was in school, you know, classmates sometimes were just sitting down, waiting for lecture and all of that. Then you hear some ladies, I have respect for all ladies, but... I, want, I need to pass this message across. You hear some ladies say, see that girl? No, my name. Just they sleep up and down. They sleep with this lecturer, sleep with this person, sleep with this person. <laughs> Sometimes, they, you know, like somebody once said that Nigerians don't hate corruption. They just want to be the persons doing it. Sometimes, the reason why the person who is, sometimes the reason why they're even complaining is that they are angry. In their mind, they're like, it's not only she, we know they here. Like, literally in their mind, you can see through what they are saying that they are not unhappy at what is going on. They are just angry that the grace does not come to them. <laughs> All right? They just feel, the, anno the annoyance is not really that somebody is doing something wrong. The annoyance is, how come it's not? And, you know, sometimes the... The reason why you, God has helped you to be disciplined is that the kind of speck that you like has not come. Amen. Amen. <laughs> yeah. You, you like them all short, but all the ones that have been coming to you are all tall. That, that don't move you. Hey, it won't move you. Amen. You like them all dark, but all the ones that have been coming are all fair. You say you are disciplined. No. Discipline is when what you like comes and for sakes of appetite and timing, you say no. That's when it's discipline. You see, no matter how, how well you package cigarettes, it's not temptation for me. Did I carry all the different brands? I know their names. Because <laughs> there was a time that my parents didn't know, but some people in the area, some bros, used to send me to go and buy. 
fact, there was a point where they graduated, they started sending me to go and buy weed. I don't know how much, how much is a wrap of weed now? Then it was 20 naira. How much is, how much is a wrap now? I want to catch those smokes. <laughs> I, I wish, I wish somebody would have given me updates. I wanted to catch who smokes. You know, so then, one rap, like big, was 20 naira. So with, with 100 naira then, I used to buy five. And if you price where, they give you six discount. But the truth is, it was never temptation for me. Never. Now, don't get me wrong, there's every tendency that if I stayed there for too long, at some point I would have said, let me even test what is what is possible. All right? If you hang around filth for too long, you sleep in it. There's a way your house will be dirty because you, are, you sleep inside. But if you come from outside, oh, let me use a very graphic example. Take for instance, <laughs> have you ever <laughs> entered a room where... Somebody is pooing. And the person is balanced inside, worshipping. <laughs> or even praying. The person, is, the person is perceiving something, but it's not bad. But you, that will come in. Now, the reason why you won't feel, and it happens to every one of us, right? If you are the one generating it, because you were there from the beginning, you won't feel the smell. I see Bro Bucci and his wife laughing. <laughs> no. Married people understand. Amen. Right? So because it is coming from you, you, are the, you were there, you came in, you were the one that set the ambience. You can be inside. Laughing, making calls. For somebody who be like, ah, this person is staying long. But you are there laughing, just gisted. Because it's coming from you. Now, somebody else comes into the atmosphere that you've shifted. And the person can't stay there. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Now, what am I saying in essence? So we have tolerance for our shit, but we don't have for other people. No, and I mean that in a very generic sense. All right? I've, I've heard people who, who they are given to a particular vice. When they talk about what they do, they'll tell you, my own, it's not, it's not just that I lie. Me, I just lie. Or me, I just sleep around. So usually, we have tolerance for our shit, but not for others. So that's why when you communicate what you do that is a deficiency, you communicate it in a line that makes it look like it is nothing. Is it not just lie that I lie? But that lie is not just. It's not. It's just that it is coming from you, so you don't think it's, you know. <laughs> it's like if your, your sibling is doing something wrong in public, because you know her for so long, Right? You know that this is how she is. Oh. So we have all gotten used to it. By the time she starts behaving, how ah, many of you here, yeah, maybe you have a sibling, no, don't raise your hand, but you have a sibling who, if you start misbehaving, all of you just say, and so she did do me, I just leave them. But if somebody else does the same thing outside that is not your sibling, you react differently. You know why? You, you've created an allowance already for that person that you've not made for the other. What we're saying in essence is that everybody has got their own brand of what? Of lust. And the reason why you're going to be tempted is because you have your own. You have it. It may not be loud. It may not be, you know, big. People may not see it, but everybody has got their own. The difference between you and the one who has fallen is Sometimes a split-second decision. Sometimes it's opportunity. Sometimes it was God ensuring that you didn't have the chance to do what you wanted to do. Don't insult somebody who is stealing billions 
when you have not got an opportunity to steal something close to that. I'm not saying don't judge what is wrong. I'm saying when you criticize, check you. You know, <laughs> uh, someone once said that there was a time he used to work in, in the oil company. And that sometimes gin takes bag. You see dollar. If you perceive dollar in mint, smelling, you know, it has a, a kind of smell. Oh, my God. It's not narrow. Dollar, new smell. It has one kind, kind of smell. Some people's loss is for dollar. If you give them, if Naira is around them, there's no problem. But once it's dollar, Benjamin. Some of us will love the Benjis. Everybody should love Benjis, you know. It's a good currency. Is, is anybody who doesn't love Benjis? You know what Benjis is? Who is the person on the dollar? Eh? You know, some of <laughs> So, who, eh? What? Washington, sorry. Okay. So, we, we're tempted usually because we've got our lost and there's a devil. Now, number, number, number three now, or four? Four, right? Number, number three. Four, I think. First thing was, what is temptation? Number two was, where does temptation come from? Number three, why am I being tempted? Number four now is, where does temptation take place? Where does it take place? Let's see Matthew 4, verse 1 to 8. Matthew 4, verse 1 to 8. Where does it take place? It says, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Jesus was led up. We're going to come to this. All right? Because I remember a story, my own story. Years ago, when I was still growing up, I, I wanted to tell the media to project that picture, but... Thank God I didn't tell them to do so. Years ago when I was still very young, now, the truth is that when I look at my picture back then, I really don't understand what, you know, the, the, <laughs> you know, I don't, then I used to feel like I was fly, you know, and may God put you in a situation whereby your past will be looking like throwback. Some of you don't understand. You know, every throwback makes everybody laugh. And the beauty to the throwback is that when you took that picture, oh, my God, <laughs> you look like this. <laughs> then you now grow up and you realize, well, what's this? <laughs> you know. And some of us are living in our throwbacks now already, because in the next five years, when you realize what you are doing now, you'll be asking yourself, what was I really doing? You know. So. So, so I remember, I remember that I had, I had that kind of situation then where for no, for reasons I couldn't understand, like ladies would just be, you know, fighting, not fight, but trying to register attention. So I had a, a, a mentor, not, he is still my mentor, Pastor Jonah. <laughs> so we're having a conversation that day. And because he had observed several ones, you know, in fact, there were even some that were very close friends. This one will come register presence as this person is leaving, the other one will come. So he had observed it because I was almost always around him. So one of the days he called me and said, that this thing that is happening to you, you need to check it out. Yeah, because you are not the most handsome in this church. He, told, he said, you're not the most handsome in this church. Because I'm looking at you. There are other brothers in this church who are finer than you. So how come every sister is chasing after you? Now you need to check this in. Now, he, when he said that, thing, I almost felt like I had a spiritual problem. All right? That was exactly what happened. I almost felt like I had a spiritual problem. But here now you're seeing that Matthew, where's that Matthew chapter 4 verse 1? The Bible says that the spirit led Jesus into the wilderness to be what? Tempted of the devil. Verse 2. Verse 2. It says, and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. Verse 3. And when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. 
Next verse. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Verse 5. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city. Now, the first question I will ask you is, do you believe that the devil can raise Jesus up and take him into the holy city? Physically. I'm asking now. Is there anybody who believes that the devil can lift Jesus up like this and take him into the holy city? And he do, pew, you know. And he says, and set him on a pinnacle of the temple. Which temple? Next one. And said unto him, if thou be the son of God, cast down thyself, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in thy hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Next verse. Jesus said unto him, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Next verse. Which should be, I think, the last one. And the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. Now, the first question to ask you is, what, where is that mountain where if you stand, you can see all the kingdoms of the world? Eh? Even Everest, you can't see everywhere from Everest. What's the highest mountain? That's Everest, right? If you still mount Everest, can you see Nigeria? Where is Everest? Huh? Lepau. What country is that? That's the country. Oh, dear. See me. I thought Everest was in Cameroon. <laughs> Thank God I didn't say it. <laughs> All right? Now, it's in Lepau, like, like he, he said. Lepau. Lepau. Le something, right? <laughs> now, the truth is, there is no mountain in this world that is high enough for you to stay on and see the world. So what was happening to Jesus here? Every temptation that happened to Jesus was all in the mind. Your temptation, where does it come? So, you see, that's why the Bible tells you to guard your heart with all diligence because out of it proceeds what? The issues of life. That's where decisions are being made. If you have, if you have a Senate building in your body, that's your mind. So, first things you must understand is that the devil is not afraid to tempt you. In the story of Jesus when he was on earth, there was never a time Jesus did 40 days and 40 nights of fasting. It was just once. And you would assume that when somebody is on 40 days, have you, have you done 40 days before? If you've done 40 days before, fasting, like, you know he was not eating. Right? He wasn't eating. If you've done 40 days of fasting before, trust me, in fact, from, from your 30th day, you begin to feel like you are a spirit. All right? Usually the first, the first 10, maybe first four or five days are days where you're still struggling with your appetite. All right? You're still struggling. Should I eat? Should I not eat? Should I not eat? Once you break past the first five days, you now start struggling with weakness. All right? Then after then, your body would adopt, would adjust. Even you would now learn how not to shout, how not to, you know, because you know you're trying to conserve energy <laughs> at that point. All right? So what I'm saying in essence is this is the highest spiritual exercise we ever recorded of Jesus in the Bible. There was no other time in the history of his time on earth where he did 40 days stretch. If there was, it wasn't recorded. In fact, I don't think there was because the word on, word on the street was that Jesus was a wine biber. Did you read that? They, they told him, he said, this guy, John came fasting. You, your own, is you're just going from one party. Jesus was a party guy. Hey. So you say, blasphemy, blasphemy is written in your Bible. All right? He will go to a politician's house, go to a Zacchaeus. When he went there, did, you, did he go for a crusade? He went to eat. It was wise he was eating. Zacchaeus now said, ah, this man, 
Righteous man, salvation has entered my house. Okay, I'm going to repent. But Jesus went about and enjoying himself. Alright? So, the highest form of spiritual exercise we find Jesus doing the Bible was when? When he did 40 days. And it was in the 40 days that the devil tempted him. The devil didn't, the devil tempted him for the 40 days. Do you know? Let, let's read, let's read um, Luke 4, verses 1 to 2. Luke 4, 1 to 2. I want to show you that the temptation of Jesus was not one day, it was 40 days. Luke 4. It says, And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Verse 2. It says, Being 40 days tempted of what? How many days? When you read Matthew's account, Matthew makes it look like it was a one time thing. Maybe at the end of the 40 days fast, the devil now came and tempted him. Luke shows you that Jesus was under temptation for 40 days. So, first thing to drop on you is that don't think it's strange when you have been tempted. Don't think it is strange when you are tempted. Don't. Because I know people who when they are tempted, they feel like, you know, the devil can say that thought in you that because you are, you are being tempted, it means that there's something you're not doing right. And once you have that knowledge, you already accepted defeat. So you feel like I'm not, I'm not good enough. For and I've always said this: if you feel like what you're wearing is rag, you stay with the dirt. But if you feel like what you're wearing is good clothes, you will avoid dirt. So sometimes the reason why many of us wallow. In, 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 in the fallen state is not because of what is happening to us but for how we have interpreted ourselves in the situation this was the highest form of spiritual exercise recorded in the bible that Jesus did and whilst he was going through it the devil was tempting him so he said there's a level of prayer you will pray the devil will not tempt you it's a lie you can say there's a level of prayer you pray and you will not respond to the temptation. That's true. But for whether the temptation will come or not, in fact, the higher you are, the more the devil wants to tempt you. Because it is those who are up that fall. It says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, had God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden, Next verse. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Verse 3. But of the, of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God had said, Ye shall not eat of it. Neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Next verse. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as God, knowing good and evil. Verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, conception. So the devil sowed the idea into her, saying, see, all that the devil said was, this tree, if you eat it, you'll be like God. She was the one that now saw that it is good for food. See, if you don't bring conception into a suggestion, it will die the same way it came. What makes temptation powerful? <laughs> what makes temptation powerful is that you received an idea and you began to conceive. You began to think. Conception is you adding life to the suggestion. Learn this principle. Every temptation will die a natural death if it stays a suggestion that is not conceived or acted upon. Every temptation that happens to the believer will die a natural death 
if it is not conceived and acted upon. I'll give you another example. I gave us an instance of, you know, when I was much younger and I used to steal from the port. It was a simple thing that was happening. I would get back from school and I see that there's, you know, stuff, stuff in there. And the first idea that comes in is, you take this stew, it's going to satisfy your hunger. There's no food. Take it and wash the plate immediately so that nobody sees you, you know, because usually when you do that kind of a job, you have to do a very clean job. In fact, when you want to wash, just in case you store rice, when you want to wash the plates, you ensure that the grain of rice enters the sink completely. Hey, boy, Brian is shaking his head. Like, <laughs> all right? You wash it well. Then you don't, you don't leave the plate wet. You dry it up. You dry it up. So that somebody will not come into the kitchen and see a wet plate beside all the dry ones that were washed in the morning. And he's asking, what happened to this one? To avoid explaining, you wash and dry it and keep it back. Then you wipe your mouth. Then you do your face like this. All right? Now, what used to happen to me was simple. I get back and I see the pot. It is my conception of if I take this food and put it into my system, wow. And usually when you want to steal, the food tastes sweeter than it actually is. Yeah. Then the Bible says stolen bread. Sweet. But eventually, it will become gravel in your mouth. You see somebody... If you take out conception and execution from anything the devil suggests into your spirit, you'll always be fine. Always. See, the devil is not powerful. You must understand. Um, I was listening to someone and he, he said, right, and it happens to me, where you are probably in the car. He's a pastor. He's an apostle, actually. Sharing, he said, he was inside the car. He said he was driving, and he said that day, any girl that passed, devil say, look at her, look at her, look at her, look at her, look at her. So he said he kept quiet for too long until at one moment he told him, he said, devil, if you are that powerful, take my neck like this. <laughs> and when he said it, I said, aha, I'm not the only one on this table, because being very honest. The fact that you don't look does not mean you don't see. And seeing is not what gets you into trouble, is looking. We all see. Amen? Except you're blind. Praise God. <laughs> Except you're blind. It is only people who are blind that don't see. But it is the voice that tells you, check now. Oftentimes, you hear, you see, you now tell you, look again, look again, check. There's a movement that you need to pay attention to. That is where the problem is. Because oftentimes it does not end with just looking. Suggestions begin to come. That's why you see a, an old man driving in the middle of the road and goes to turn to talk to a young girl. You know, sometimes I used to ask myself, how do people think You've never seen somebody before, never heard of her before, you don't know a thing about her, you see her on the road, and you want to take her to the house. What if the girl is a higher killer? Or even a spirit? And like, literally. There are stories of people who have taken people to the house, and after having sex, the person disappeared. You think it's only in Hollywood movies? <laughs> no, no, no. You, you, you think, some of us think it's only in Hollywood movies. Eh? You think it's only in Hollywood movies that these things happen? It happens. <laughs> I, I heard a story of, of uh, a young man who slept with a lady. And when he finished, that was the first time he was seeing her. When he finished, on his private part, there, there were, what was it called now? You know when snake bites somebody? Right? That was what was on his private part. It was like snake bite. So he observed the thing and cried out for help. And usually when people 
become foolish and get into a problem. It's pastors that... We can't, we can't, as pastors, we can't afford to live in the flesh at any moment because problem can come at any time. You need to act. Literally happened. So this is a caution. You can't just go and be living anyhow. You can't. You see, unrighteousness is not flex. It's not flex. It's not flex. You only have the enjoyment for the moment, but it's not flex. Not. So what made Eve fall was not the suggestion. It was the conception and execution she brought in. Go back to that scripture. That, um, that Genesis, sorry. I think we're, we're on verse 6. It says, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, she saw and pleasant to the eyes. Now you see here, next week we'll, we'll, talk, we'll, we'll look more into this. When she saw that it was good for food, it was pleasant to the eyes, lust of the eyes. So you have what you see here are three. You have lust of the flesh, it was good for food. It was pleasant to the eye, lust of the eyes. And it was desirous to make one wise, the pride of life. Everything the devil tempts you with is summarized in three things. Loss of the flesh, loss of the eyes, and the pride of life. Nothing more. Listen. You are the one that puts, that adds power to the temptation the devil brings by bringing your own conception and execution to it. If you see, there are days I fight thoughts. I know the interesting thing is that thoughts don't come to you only when you are maybe when you are watching movie. I've I've had moments where in the middle of hot prayer, oh, you don't understand. They are like fairy darts thrown to you. In the middle of hot prayer, your mind will just move to something that doesn't make sense. I know many times I'll be like, come on, get off. Like in the middle of prayer, I'll say, come on, get off. Then I continue what I'm doing. The reason why you shouldn't stay a minute giving thought to some... Listen, don't stay your mind on something you don't want to reap the fruit of. Amen? You're a single sister. You don't have any reason admiring a married man. Or a married man, you've got no business admiring a single sister or another person's wife. What will if I begin to admire somebody who is married? What's the end? Take all your admiration and put on your spouse. As far as I'm concerned, my wife is the only beautiful woman in the world. Now, listen, it is true. Is beautiful, but you must understand that this decision is not something I've reached for her sake, it's for my sake. For my sake, say it's not possible for a man to stay faithful for one to one woman. You are listening to the wrong people. You are listening to what? The wrong people, and usually, usually we expect the women to be to be faithful, but the man. There, I've spoken to men before who tell me that uh, that is not a big deal now. That all men should have girlfriends. So what happens to you is that you take that word and you begin to dwell on it. Then one day your wife will now know you say this is the reason why that man gave that advice. So this is the reason why he gave that advice. Just imagine if I had a girlfriend now, she's misbehaving now. I'll just go and meet that. She will not be calling me, say, please come back, come back. Nollywood. (laughs) 
What I'm trying to show you today is that the devil is not powerful. The power of the temptation is what you bring to the equation. That's what the power of the temptation is. The devil would, would, would suggest, like Bro Higgin once said, said, we don't have control over a bed flying over your head, but you have control over what stays on your head and builds a nest on it. You know, as we're sitting here now, if you take this shade off, you realize that beds have been flying. You can't control that one. But if a bed now comes to perch on your head and it stays, that one is up to you. All right? That one is up to you. Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. Let's close with this. Woo, glory to God. Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. Tomorrow we'll show you, not tomorrow, sorry, next week, there are a couple of things we'll look at. Number one is we'll look at how does yielding to temptation profit the devil? Because you need to find out. Then number two, how does it affect you? Even with things that you have to do with God. Because I've always said, I've always said this. Alright? If tempting you brings the devil no profit after you got saved, it will stop. Because oftentimes, People make it sound like once you are saved, whether you have whether you fall into temptation or not, it doesn't matter. Glory, glory. If tempting you does not bring profit to the devil, he won't do it. So there's a reason why the devil tempts you. And we're going to show you also next week how to live. Now, I'm not going, I can't find anywhere in the Bible where I can teach you how you are not going to be tempted. But I can show you from the scriptures how to live above temptations. Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. It says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, it says, do what? Think on this. Meaning, conceptualize, conceive. These are the things to conceive. If it doesn't fall in this category, you don't have any business conceiving it. Because eventually, you know, someone say, I don't know why I'm being tempted. I don't know why I'm being tempted. What are you conceiving? What are you giving thought to? What are you giving thought to? What? Check where your mind is. Check it. It's not like when it's something that is consistent every time. Check what, what you're feeding on. Many of us are attracting unnecessary temptations to ourselves by what we are letting into our system. Praise God. Temptation is not powerful. It is what you bring to the equation that brings the power. Conception. And what? Execution. All the devil did to Eve was tell him, Hello, if you eat this, you are going to be this. You are going to become like God. She was the one that saw that it was good for food. She was the one that saw that it was a tree that would make one wise. She was the one that saw that, oh boy, if I eat this thing, it's good on my body. That's all. And with all the suggestions, has, has, has it ever happened to you before where you are tempted and the, the devil moves your hand to do what you want to do? Has it happened to you? Never. Except in the case of demonic possession. And if there's anybody here, that spirit will cast it out today. All right? But all I'm saying in essence is, that thing at the end of the day, it's your will. It is what you bring to the table. So if you, it's, it's like a bomb. If you learn to detonate it, it won't explode. It won't. So the idea comes to you. What do you do with it? The Bible says to cast down every imagination. Cast it down. Is there, he's casting down thoughts. Is it that serious? Yes, it is. Because next week we'll, we'll show you from scriptures how that temptation 
what the devil wants to do is for you to graduate from being tempted to having habit. And from habit, you become controlled. Yes. So you see people who, all of a sudden, there are certain things that they can't stop themselves from doing any longer. It didn't start like that. It started from a temptation. Then it became habitual. Then from being habitual, now they are under control. Usually criminals started by stealing small, small. So maybe you're a child here and you stole meat and your, your parent flogged you. What you are seeing is meat. Your parent is seeing what will become of you if you continually follow that path. So he says, is it because of this small thing that I stole? That's why they're beating me like this. No. It is what is to beat you for the foolishness of now and what it will result to in the future. Somebody tell your neighbor, detonate evil thought. Detonate it. And all you need to do is take out conception and execution would die a natural death. But just in case you have conceived it, you have conceived it. Yeah, you have conceived it. What do you do? You begin to cast down those thoughts now. Listen. I say this again, that I have not seen anywhere in the Bible where God promises us that we can live here on earth without being tempted. I've not seen. But I've seen also that you can live above temptation. And that's the bulk of what we are going to do next week as we round off this teaching. Can we be on our feet? Can we be on our feet? Hold, hold a neighbor. Hold someone. Hold someone. We're going to pray. If there's anybody here who is under the control of some negative vices, there are some persons who they can't help themselves any longer. Because it has gone past just being tempted. It has graduated to control. We're going to pray in the name of Jesus. Not necessarily the person you're holding, but if that person is a member of this church, whether online or on-site, we set them free of the bondage of, of control of the devil. Can we open up our mouths and pray? Pray like who you are praying for is the person you're holding. Pray like who you're praying for is the person you're holding. My brother or my sister whose sin is dominating in the name of Jesus we yank them off. We take away the power of control. We take it away. We take it away. If there's anyone who is under spiritual influence who can help themselves again. Rei kapila seso farate. Reni antapila monte kerata bivososos. Rota kalia barate. Shekre de kepido santa la ba. Ramako palo sunteka. Aikape nitelas. Aikomina sumpratale. Rekapale asiza. Mando lobo kusoto brata bomose. Rapade kapila sante. Repartize Zalo Corato. Oh, we set them free. We set them free. Handa Bashata. Rapatika du Satabalatone. We set them free. Recapele Sonte. Anybody held captive under the bondage of a habit. Any bondage of a habit. Yama Satababaswa. Rapatapila Setapate. Ruata capela sute, mande caprasco tomasaya, caprase capila sonte, somi atabaya. I speak to that person, your own is promiscuity. Until you are done with it, your eye will not be open. But once you are done, you, you become free. That spirit of promiscuity, I come against it now. I come against it now. In the name of Jesus, I set you free. Shega baraga belekota, 
Rabias caprata balanandos. Le condico seco peti. Rosso balia no kaya. Parade se catale. Prenambo corapana. Masata baba bashe te pala. Two more minutes. Pray in the spirit. Pray on the standard. We set them free. We set them free. The Bible says that Jesus was at the garden of Gethsemane. He was a prayer of witness. But he prayed. He prayed. Nevertheless, your will be done. We establish the will of God upon everyone. Today we decree habits are breaking. Habits are breaking. Negative habits are breaking. Negative vices are breaking. If you came in here with a spirit of death, I speak into your life. That spirit leaves you now. I hope you're praying. So Rabanan Takabella, Labrata Capella Santa Capon, uncontrolled appetite for, for, for pornography is gone, is gone. I cause that spirit to leave you now. Rabene Sita, Ailo Brata Tomina Santa, Rababa Catena Satana, Rababaliga Dusa, Rababaliga Dusa, Rosco Patomi, Lecatopino Seto. A ruada baba la katena, raba sete kalo, katena yando kota, raba joka bala sa, abraske se bala menda, rabe na kabila sa, e kapon se te kapon, la baba baba na kole, raba na mena kapayo sa, baba baba tailo sa ile, e kwa baba ra taila 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 taila, e la monto bosa, sa baba la baroko tela, a kwa baba, rabe na kabela sikando. Rapa no koson taka, rapa kade kaniso, dasi kaparu asel, rana maka sondo bosh, lapet mana sizo karata, rapa baka tala jadis, rata kade la susa, rapa no koson taka balata, rapa deke tala ba, ekan mena mena kobra kade la, rapa nami asonta, apa nama na kando sela, apa dika baka dika baka dika, kapaka dika baka dika. We decree freedom. We decree freedom. Freedom in the house. Everybody held captive by any negative habit is let loose tonight. Is let loose tonight. So na moro to kusoba. Alunda baba tai asaina. Elete chele mendia. Aluanda bebe lete. In Jesus name. Every spirit of promiscuity. In the name of Jesus, leave now. Spirit of theft, leave now. There's someone here, your own is, you lie. And it's not something you can control any longer. In the name of Jesus, who the Son of Man has set free is free indeed. I decree you free. In the name of Jesus. If you're sick in your body, just lift up your hands. Wherever you are. You're sick in your body. Online, on site. Anybody who is sick in the body. Just lift up your hands in the name of Jesus. For whatever the condition is, I speak healing. I decree healing. I decree healing. My hands are outstretched. It's an extension of the hand of God. And I place it upon you right now. In the name of Jesus. Upon your forehead. Every sickness in your system. Go now. In the name of Jesus. Every pain in your system. Go now. In the name of Jesus. Every affliction in your body. Go now. In the name of Jesus. I decree you're healed. You're healed. You're healed. You're healed. You're healed. Now rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. You're healed. Glory to God.